What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. The Earth Master here on this Wednesday, April 20th, 2022 date, uh, about 11.47 a.m. California time. Latest quake shows a uh, 2.9 or 2.8 earthquake up here into the Gulf of Alaska region. Let's go ahead and check out uh, some solar weather first before we jump into the uh, earthquake activity. Of course, last night we had a pretty strong X flare. In fact, the strongest X flare of the current solar cycle, solar cycle 25. Uh, it did reach a peak of X 2.2, uh, and it peaked out there around the 0357 UTC time uh, last night. Uh, the CME is not directed at Earth, so uh, that was from a departing sunspot, not from this major sunspot that we're kind of monitoring, but from a uh, uh, departing sunspot, which is now definitely on the far side of the sun, uh, currently not visible, at least in these images, maybe just barely a little bit in this recent image here off on the side but uh, we're kind of watching this major sunspot rotate in the view and uh, it's huge it's definitely massive folks let's check this out on the uh, visible disc here see all these sunspots pretty big quite a few uh, skip conditions going on here with the uh, um, frequencies there on the lower uh, MHZ bands right now the current solar flare detection chart here we'll go ahead and pull this up these guys are a little bit slow not for sure what's going on uh, there's the x 2.2 that peaked up last night here uh, since then we have seen another strong flare an m flare kick up uh, a few hours ago and it looks like we're starting to ramp up here getting that upward trend once again of the uh, the x-ray flux here in the one minute data this is a three-day chart by the way showing the uh, activity over the last three days and you can adjust this accordingly here on the um, icons up here. But it looks as though within the last hour, we're getting that uh, peak back up into the M range once again. Uh, see this little step ladder? So things are starting to strength, uh, strengthen once again. Uh, I still think there's a good probability of seeing another X flare um, from uh, uh, the sunspots here that are facing the Earth. But uh, I wouldn't put it past it for this one here to give one more shout out uh, as it does rotate uh, away from us. But these two big, these, uh, how many are there? Like two or three sunspots now, pretty much clustered all together. 2994, 2993, and 2995 with some developing sunspots even behind that. So as this rotates into view uh, over the coming days, it's just going to be a massive trail, kind of like a train of sunspots. And I'm kind of curious to see what these things are going to give us here in the coming days. So be alert, stay alert. Uh, nothing really to be worried about too much unless we get into the major mega X flares. But uh, X flares are um, very common in the solar maximum. Even we get them even in the minimum days or uh, minimum cycles. So um, just we got to watch those, the big ones, the really big ones that could dis uh, disrupt the uh, navigation systems, GPS, satellites, and such. Uh, and power grids and whatnot. So uh, right now the three-day geomagnetic forecast calls for calm conditions here across uh, the mid and higher latitudes. Uh, not much going on there when it comes to the um, the storming conditions. No major CME directed at us and no uh, large uh, coronal holes uh, that are facing the earth currently. So at least that's for now. Stable conditions for now in that department. But the flaring activity does continue. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the earthquake activity around the map here. Uh, we're going to go into the Southern California region where they're still having some movement down here at the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, there's that swarm of activity here. We're looking at about 33 earthquakes or so uh, over the course of 24 hours within this region. So far, the largest, a 3.7 occurring uh, yesterday in that cluster. And uh, I think we've seen another three or two uh, I think we've seen a couple threes overnight as well. We're starting to see a little migration up to the north towards the uh, town of Brawley area, uh, including a 1.6 within the last hour. That one's pretty shallow, though, 1.1 kilometers. So you look at these depths here of these, these earthquakes, and the majority of them, at least these smaller ones here, are between uh, 3 and 5 kilometers. But you start getting into these bigger ones, the threes, those are the ones that are much deeper taking place down there, way down into the fault systems, including that 3.6 and 3.7 yesterday. So a lot of a lot of adjustment going on down there 
in the deeper areas and that's kind of concerning here uh, when it comes to the San Andreas Fault. Uh, you know I know we get swarms occasionally in the Salton Sea area they come and go right no big one on the San Andreas Fault right but who's to say that this system this little swarm of activity doesn't trigger the big one you just never know we could be uh, talking about the swarm today and then between now and tomorrow we could have that big one along the San Andreas Fault so it's always good to be alert pay attention to what's going on here uh, around a major major fault zone such as the San Andreas Fault which sits right about here right the Brawley seismic zone pretty much an extensional fault system but it does kind of run right into it it extends down to where the swarming activity is kicking up here uh, also we're getting a little bit of activity here in the Salton Sea area much further north you notice that migration here kind of stretching up to the San Andreas Fault zone uh, with a couple earthquakes in the Salton Sea region, 1.5, 1.6, a little bit deeper, uh, between 6 and 8 kilometers there. Nothing going on on the San Andreas Fault itself, but uh, with all the height and movement and the earthquake activity uh, earlier this week and last week, and remember the uh, earthquake off the coast of Tijuana and swarming activity in the Gulf, all kind of pointing up here towards the uh, southern end of the San Andreas Fault. So we've got we've got to watch that pretty closely. Ridgecrest area, a little bit of movement here today up in this uh, zone. And one earthquake along the Garlock Fault structure, shear zone 1.2. Pretty shallow earthquake on that uh, fault there. And it uh, looks like a little bit of movement on the western side of the San Joaquin Valley as well. Uh, Northern California, one earthquake way up here along the coastal range with a 2.0 near uh, the Brook Trails, California area, right off the McCama Fault System. Uh, it's a pretty lengthy fault system that runs up here along the coast range. Cascadia looks pretty quiet right now. Not a whole lot going on. There was some tremor activity yesterday. This is the uh, tremor map from yesterday, 419. 29 epicenters of tremor here, uh, mostly in Oregon and up here in the Vancouver Island ranges. Uh, checking out the 18th. I'm kind of curious to see if they've added anything. Looks like they did. whoop de doo <laughs> six, six little epicenters of tremor here. Uh, in the Oregon region. Now these are not earthquakes, but uh, tremor events, right? Deep down into the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. So no major movement going on here at the moment, but um, good to see that they're at least reporting the activity. Hopefully that's all. You know, I'm hoping they're not just including a small fraction of what's really going on there. Uh, looking back at the earthquake activity, not a whole lot through the Pacific Northwest. Look at that. No microquakes whatsoever. So in that turn, I'd like to go over here to the uh, uh, volcanic uh, seismographs that monitor the activity. We can check out Mount St. Helens like we always do. We'll check out another volcano or two, uh, seeing if there's any um, activity here happening that's not being reported on that aspect. So this is Mount St. Helens. This kind of looks like yesterday. Um, oh, look at this. Missing a whole bunch of data here from the Mount St. Helens area. I remember seeing this last night this uh, earthquake here when I was doing the update but since then there's been no data being reported here from this station uh, see if we can kick uh, another one up here a different uh, broadband station see if they have the same well it wow okay image not found on that one either it's a little on the odd side I think see if I can get uh, a different station to pull up here. Well, oh, they're still they're still uh, lacking the data as well. Not for sure what's going on with that, but they're uh, uh, it's uh, <laughs> some lack of reporting there. All right, let's go ahead and check out the volcanic uh, activity at the Three Sisters. In the uh, I meant to check out the uh, Newberry volcano. Not a whole lot going on at Three Sisters. Uh, over here at the Newberry Volcano in the Oregon region. Another big storm coming up in the Pacific Northwest here in California. Getting a lot of rain, a lot of snow, except for where I live. Uh, got those uh, rain shadow effects here from the mountain, uh, the mountains that sit to our west, unfortunately. Um, eh, not a whole lot going on here at the Newberry Volcano. Uh, maybe a couple very small microquakes at that, but uh, overall I'm not seeing any type of swarming going on uh, from yesterday either. Looks uh, looks pretty mellow, folks. Not a whole lot going on. Some of these spots here, 
Uh, could be interference, could be weather related. Those don't look like earthquake uh, movement or volcanic tremor uh, in that aspect there. So uh, moving on to the uh, Intermountain West area, Idaho seen a little bit of uptick in movement, including a 3.0 in the Stanley, Idaho area off of the Sawtooth Fault System and Yellowstone. A little bit of movement here showing up on the map today. A couple small microquakes that kicked up overnight. That's going to be, uh, let me make sure I got the recent map here on, yes I do, right around the Maple Creek area. Uh, looking like, uh, yeah, early, early this morning. Uh, I think when most people were sleeping, I think, uh, I had a pretty good cluster of quakes here. See all this movement, all of this activity as well. So a good handful of quakes, probably more than a handful. looks like a good 15 earthquakes or so. Uh, USGS only reporting a fraction of them. Uh, looks like the largest at 1.4, uh, at 0347 UTC time. So 0347. UTC time is going to be this one right here, but uh, if you look, there's definitely a lot more earthquake activity than that one uh, that they're reporting there in the 1.4 range. Uh, backing out of here <clears throat> into uh, center part of the country, pretty quiet throughout Oklahoma, Southern Plains area. One earthquake out here in the Texas region, a 3.2. This one a little bit further north <clears throat> than the area that we've been watching here over the last few months. Talking about the uh, swarm of activity near the Pecos, Texas region. Uh, so one little earthquake outside of that uh, zone, 3.2 at uh, seven kilometers. Eastern part of the country, as we check out here, a little bit of movement near the New Madrid zone, um, 1.8 near Bernie, Missouri, 15 kilometer depth for that earthquake, pretty deep. And up here, uh, just outside of Cincinnati here, looks like on the state line of Kentucky and Ohio, a 2.1 at 14 kilometers. Pretty deep activity going on with those two little quakes. Uh, not a whole lot going on through Puerto Rico today. Just some typical movement and a little broader activity throughout the South America region with uh, movement uh, from Colombia southward into Chile with some deeper activity into this Peru-Chile trench region. Uh, one earthquake down here in the Scotia Sea. It's just outside of the South Sandwich Trench here. So a little bit of westward pressure movement including a 5.1 and a 5.5 kicking off overnight in that region. Uh, still seeing quite a bit of activity here in the Western Pacific, uh, at least over here outside of the uh, Pacific Ring of Fire. That includes areas around the Philippine Trench where we've seen that activity, a larger quake here a couple days ago. They're still seeing an increase in movement and some aftershock sequences there throughout the region. Uh, one earthquake up here around the uh, north of the Mariana Trench 4.7 and the uh, Japan and the Kurokam Chaka Trench all look pretty quiet. Aleutian Trench as well. Not a whole lot going on today in that region. <clears throat> Still kind of missing uh, activity here in the Fiji Islands area. We haven't seen any deep large-scale movement here in a little while. So things are uh, things are probably going to be uh, kicking up here pretty soon. It's been about, uh, let me check out, seven days of activity. Look at that. 4.5 and above we haven't seen anything in the deep areas if you watch this channel and you know a little bit about uh, some deeper earthquake activity it typically occurs within this region here of uh, just south of Fiji into the Tonga Trench Kermadec Trench area and we just haven't seen it these are very shallow quakes up here towards the surface but we're missing the deeper movement so and keep your uh, definitely keep your guards up on that we can see some big ones down there way down there so we got to uh, be prepared on that one as well. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, I don't believe too much going on up in Canada, but we do like to check out the Earthquakes Canada map here often. Looks like that same earthquake here from last night, just a 3.0 way up in the north part. Uh, Quebec area looks like a 2.0 depth for that, re uh, for that region. Um, so yeah, so watching the solar weather pretty closely here, folks. We're just getting that stepping ladder once again with these last couple measurements going on um, here with the activity. We're almost getting a consistent C flare range uh, and then a couple M flares as well. But uh, watch, like I say, watch this area pretty closely here. It's looking like it may spike out again uh, towards possibly something much larger. Uh, these guys still forecasting 25% chance of an M flare or uh, X flare and 75% uh, chance of an M flare, 99% certainty, right? Almost 100% with the C flare ongoing popping and crackling of the uh, solar activity on the sun. 
looking at the dy dynamics here of the sunspots uh, not super advanced in terms of um, well it looks like we might be getting a little intermixing here of the magnetic uh, polarity uh, of the sun spots but we've got to see how this plays out I know they're huge but you can have a massive huge sunspot you know in the center of the uh, of the sun and if there's not a, a whole lot of uh, intertwining and intermixing of the magnetic field you won't get those massive solar flares so uh, either way we're definitely going to keep an eye on it there is the uh, kind of something that you would see if you look through a, a solar telescope with a filter on it I believe look at that beautiful sunspots there 2994 of course the older sunspot that's been making its way around the sun a couple times there I believe this is the one that uh, gave us um, an X flare a couple weeks ago formerly 2975 so looking uh, looking pretty awesome they're, they're pretty big but uh, we'll see if these things want to pop off some flares here in the coming days all right guys I'm gonna jump off here have yourself a uh, beautiful Wednesday right is it Wednesday yes it is <laughs> And uh, we'll chat you guys a little bit later tonight unless something major happens. Of course, then we'll jump in and uh, provide an update. Make sure you guys subscribe here while you're on the channel. Uh, we do a lot of uh, solar weather updates, earthquake updates, uh, storm chasing and whatnot. Uh, pretty active channel in terms of uh, uh, adventure, right? <laughs> we do a lot of adventure stuff on this channel. So make sure you guys subscribe and uh, click the notification bell because that does let you get notified whenever we go live and also whenever we post an update video in terms of what's going on on the earth scene all right guys take care we'll chat you a little bit later